The pull-up is one of the most sought-after bodyweight exercises. A lot of people, when they start training, assume that because they cannot complete one, they are of a low level of fitness. The reality is that the ability to perform a strict pull-up is rare amongst the general population. My estimate would be that you took 100 men and 100 women between the ages of 25 to 50 off the street, maybe three men could perform a strict dead hang pull-up and one woman. Obviously, amongst the gym-going population, that would be slightly higher, and in the CrossFit gym, a little higher still. However, it is still most likely to be fewer than one in 10 people able to complete a strict dead hang pull-up. In the next series of videos, I'm going to help you progress to the point where you can perform a strict dead hang pull-up. For those of you who already have pull-ups, all of the exercises I will cover in these videos are a great accessory to help build pull-up endurance. I perform every one of these exercises on a regular basis myself and with my clients. Following the first series of videos, I will also provide some additional content for those of you wanting to get to a chest to bar pull up, ring muscle up, bar muscle up, and also how to have kipping and butterfly pull ups to your repertoire. Strict before kipping. Before I start, I want to clarify one misconception. You must train strict pull ups before considering adding gymnastic kip. A strict pull-up is a pure strength exercise, whereas a kipping pull-up is a variation that allows you to increase your volume and intensity during a workout. At CrossFit, we work both. When a workout has an intended stimulus of being hard and fast, then kipping or butterfly variations are often used to allow us to keep moving fast throughout and complete large, unbroken sets of work. These gymnastic variations should not be used as a shortcut to your first pull-up, however. The danger of someone having an amazing kipping action, but without the strength to conserve the danger of someone having an amazing kipping action but without the strength to control the descent is an increased risk of injury to the shoulder. Build to a set of at least three to five full strict dead hang pull ups before moving on to the full kipping variations. We can still learn the kipping action but just not for the load that we cannot control. Banded or toe assisted kipping practice is a good option for those wanting to scale workouts and add that gymnastic skill element of the kip to that workout. It's really important to set realistic expectations prior to starting your pull-up training program. Remember that a pull-up can take anything from minutes to years to achieve. Just because the journey is long, it is still going to be worth it. Along the way, you will gain strength that will progress most other exercises you will perform in the gym. Consider the following factors when managing your expectations. Where are you starting from? Where are you right now? As you go through our series, you will work through a number of progressions. The first set of exercises, the first video I'll be doing, will be achievable for all athletes. And as you go through, it will work as what we call the bus stop method. This means you will get up at the point where you can still achieve quality reps. This gives you initially a good benchmark as to your current level and how far away you are from that first pull up. If you're more advanced, do not skip ahead through the videos as every exercise has a direct benefit to your progress. The simplest measures you can have for pull ups will be covered in the first video. Here we will test grip, core, and pulling strength. These are the three basic requirements to get your pull up. Remember that genetics help. Some people can get disheartened when they see others achieve pull ups before them. 
you must remember there are some anthropometric, that's the body dimension factors that can affect the ease or the difficulty of a pull-up. Short people will carry less weight. In the same principle that it's easier to bench press 50 kilos than it is to bench press 60 kilos, if you are shorter, then generally you carry less weight, which makes life easier. A 120 kilo athlete is not able to become twice as strong as a 60 kilo athlete with the same body composition. If you look at the deadlift world record, you can see that the 59 kilo men's world record is a 275 kilo deadlift, whereas the 120 kilo men's world record is 320, sorry, 372 kilos. So across the lift, there's about a 30% increase for someone who's got double body weight. This means pull-ups for lighter people is a big advantage. Limb length is crucial too. Shorter limb athletes have another large advantage. Firstly, shorter limbs need a shorter distance to travel for each rep. Work equals force times distance. Therefore, shorter distance to travel requires less effort. In addition to that, short limbs require less force to move due to the shorter distance from the point of the rotation, in other words, from the joint. For pull-ups, the length of the humerus also makes a difference, shorter being advantageous. Therefore, comparison with others is not beneficial. The optimal body type for pull-ups would be someone short, lean, with a long body, short limbs, and a shorter than usual humerus bone. If you have some or all of these attributes, you are at a big advantage, so it's not easy to have a direct comparison. You can obviously make pull-ups easier. Improving your body composition is always the best start. As I said earlier, being lighter makes a huge difference. The lower your body fat, the less excess weight you are carrying. It is often far faster to take five kilos off your own weight than to gain five kilos of pulling strength. To ensure your nutrition is on point can make your pull-ups much easier. Consider the time it would take to get your desired body fat percentage when setting your expectations. Losing around 1% of body fat per month is a realistic time frame. That might sound slow, but when you think that would mean that someone of average body fat could get to single digits body fat, that means defined abdominals in one year. That's a pretty fast turnaround. Now I know what a great achievement it is for my athletes to achieve their first pull up. A lot of these people, they thought it was beyond their capabilities. And I'm excited to help you guys along the way to your first pull up. Keys are put in the work, be consistent, and remember that training sessions are not always going to be perfect. For most of us, about three or four out of 10 sessions will be below average. Three to four will be what I consider mediocre. One or two good sessions, and maybe one great session out of 10. You can't expect every session to be perfect. It's not going to happen. But it does not matter. What matters is you just keep coming back. So I'll see you in the first episode of our series to get you moving towards your first pull-up or improve your current pull-ups.